So today I'm going to review maybe one of the most famous wines in the wine world at the moment, thanks to um, Rajat Parr and the Somme films, uh, and because it's, you know, these wines are good. Uh, I had the Bloomsfield um, for 2015 for my birthday at um, Noble Rock last year. So this is the 2015 Domaine de la Côte, La Côte from uh, the Santa Rita Hills, so that's Santa Barbara County, the winery is in Lompoc. Um, this is probably the most decorated wine up to this point that they produced, the Domaine de la Côte, the 2015 La Côte, was 96 points from Wine Advocate, 93 points from Antonio Galloni. So I'm going to run through three, just three, we're going to limit it to three interesting facts about uh, this wine. So number one, 2015 was a super tough vintage for the producers, only, um, only yielding about a third of the normal um, number of grape. Um, but maybe good news for us because those really small berries were uh, super concentrated and produced, um, you know, high in sugar, had 13% alcohol and um, good concentration of fruit. So, um, yeah, not many of these bottles produced, but the ones that were out there uh, are now one down. Those, those Some people will be annoyed at me at opening a 2015 uh, this, but you know what? It's my life, guys. Do what I want. You know, I'm an adult. 2015 was a really great vintage for us, and not such a great vintage for, um, well, well, no, you know, who knows, helps solidify their uh, their reputation, right? Um, interesting fact number two, Domaine de la Côte is very keen on using whole clusters in their um, fermentation, so that means that you can get uh, incremental tannin, maybe less acidity, um, depending on the ripeness of um, the stalks. Oh, sorry, sorry, uh, whole clusters means that um, de-stemming didn't take place. I don't know what percentage of whole clusters was used for the 2015 La Cote, so if anyone does know, please do let me know. And also, um, it produce, can produce no, um, more freshness in a wine um, due to um, better oxidation, I guess, um, with the um, addition of the stalks. Um, so yeah, they can be a little bit more complex. And interesting uh, point about this wine number three is um, the vineyard itself. So you can see uh, it kind of illustration of the um, Domain de la Cote vineyards. Um, it's on a sheltered slope of Monterey Shale and uh, diatomaceous earth, really good drainage and um, the soil itself helps um, reflect heat back up at the vines in the evening so this is a kind of marginal ripening area on the coast, La Cote. Um, so yeah, this is, this is, the, the, you are, um, you're, you're in the kind of margins here so and that, that's something that uh, Pinot Noir does tend to like. You can really get some magical wines from um, marginal sites. So, what to expect from a Santa Rita Hills Pinot Noir? Hmm, well, these guys, you know, they, they are attempting to do things slightly differently. It's 100% French oak. It's uh, whole cluster fermentation. And they, you know, they talk about being a little bit more Burgundian. Look at the, the label and the name and everything else. So I wouldn't say these guys are super, uh, you know, they're not, they're not going to be really true to the whole Santa Rita Hills um, expression of a wine, which, you know, in the past has tend to be very rich and deep and opulent wines, higher alcohol for sure. Um, I think they're a thing of their own, so probably it's not best to compare. So let's, um, let's take a look at the wine. Again, probably best to look here, and it's some of my favourite colour, Mid Ruby. So the nose is super, 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 super intense and very concentrated red fruits, red currant and uh, cranberry. Hints of iodine in there, which I do tend to get quite a bit of when, uh, when I went to California last year. I noticed a lot of that in the Pinot. Um, but very ripe, super, super ripe cherry, kind of quiche almost, and I get a little hint of marzipan, kind of sweet spice. Really rich, round, voluptuous, and, and, but very, very fresh. That's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful nose. So on the palate. Okay, so it's mid-bodied. Um, super light tannins. They are there, but very fine. Acidity is very fresh, coming through in, in waves now. Um... There is a long finish of really clean, pure fruit. I get a lot of that red red fruit and a lot of that sweet spice still on the on the mid palate. But the most interesting and gorgeous thing about this wine is actually the attack. So it's like a full hit of really clean, pure red fruit. Um, and I, you know, you, I, it's pretty rare actually to 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 get that kind of boom, um, 
impact from a wine in a really good way. Um, I'm just gonna have another taste. And this is amazing. This is better than the uh, than the Bloomsfield that I had the 2015. And I'm sure, yes, it will uh, only improve. Um, it's 78 pounds for a bottle from Roberson, 75 dollars from Wine Library. These do compete and compare with some of um, you know some top Burgundy. So if anyone knows, you know the prices of top Burgundy, 200, 300 pounds. I think you should get a case, right? I think I should get a case. I'm going to get a case. Okay. So question is. For you now, where in the wine world are you really enjoying at the moment? Uh, yeah, what was the most recent Pinot Noir you had and which Pinot Noir um, in the wine, anywhere in the wine world, where are you drinking Pinot Noir at the moment?